a number of people dependent on food stamps in America, I read, is something like 37 million people in the richest country in the world. And the danger, and it is a danger, when you get an economic crisis, some man comes along and says, as Hitler did, give me power, said Hitler. It's all due to the Jews and the communists and the trade unionists, said Hitler. Give me power and I'll give you jobs. And he did. He took half the unemployed and put them in the arms factories. The other half he put in the German army. And we had a second world war. And in two world wars over a period of a mere 35 years, 105 million people were killed in those two European wars. And with chemical, nuclear and biological weapons, you can be sure that any wars on those scales would really threaten to obliterate the human race. And I think the Stop the War movement is uh, beginning to tap a very deep moral feeling in people that what is being done is wrong. We are so used to being told that somebody's powerful, somebody's weak, somebody's rich, somebody's poor, somebody's strong, uh, somebody's uh, uh, got special authority, but actually it's right or wrong. I, uh, went in 1983 to Hiroshima and I saw the, uh, the town, the city that had been destroyed by the atomic bomb. And uh, it was the most incredible experience. The thing that struck in my mind more than anything else, as I was going along the street with a guide, there was a little mark on the curb. And I said, why do you show me that? And they said, because that's where a child was sitting when the bomb exploded and the child was vaporized, the child just disappeared and all that was left was the mark. And next to it was a twisted metal lunchbox that the child had had. The bomb couldn't vaporize the lunchbox, but it contorted it with the heat. So all that was left of that human being was a mark and a piece of metal. And uh, these weapons are so widely distributed now that uh, they, we're contemplating something that no generation in human history has ever had to contemplate. The younger people, and there are a few here today, have got uh, a power to destroy the human race, which never existed before. You kill one or two people with a bow and arrow or a rifle or a pistol or a bomb. But with chemical, nuclear and biological weapons, you could obliterate the human race. On the other hand, it's the first generation in human history that has the know-how, the technology and the money to solve the problems of the human race. If the money spent on war was spent on building schools and hospitals and homes and recruiting teachers and nurses, not only would the world be a much better place, but it would be a much safer place because poverty is the greatest cause of war. And you see even recently these little examples of violence in Britain, Fred Goodwin's house having the windows broken. When you start that, then you find that the whole thing escalates and then that's when the strong man comes along and says, give me power and I'll deal with all this. And in that connection, there's another aspect relating back to what we are discussing namely the use of the war which we have launched as a use of it as an excuse to attack the Muslim community. And this is a terrible if, thing to do because my understanding, I'm in the presence of a bishop who will tell me if I'm wrong, but although uh, there is a great divergence between the teachings and practices of Islam and Judaism and Christianity, all the great religions of the world were founded by men who said you should treat other people as you want to be treated yourself. That is the golden rule. And on trade union banners it says an injury to one is an injury to all. And when I heard Bush say God told him to go into Iraq as if God had an office in the White House, <laughs> or when Osama bin Laden said if you don't accept my view of the Quran you should be executed. And the worst of all, I think of the Zionists who say that Moses went up Mount Sinai, well I was brought up on the Bible, and Moses went up Mount Sinai and God allocated Palestine to the Jews as if God was an estate agent. And they used that argument. And all these are ways of dividing the human race at a time when I think everybody recognizes quite candidly we live or die together. So this great Stop the War movement which, uh, has been formed and has been working so actively has got within it very, very many important points. Guide to what we should do now. A perspective for the future. And perhaps most important of all, it is an organization that has brought Muslims and Christians and Jews together for peace. And I think long after all this is over, assuming we get through it, there will be bonds of friendship between the communities here 
which will stand us in good stead. I have uh, ten grandchildren. Uh, talking to a friend of mine a moment ago, said, you've got 15 now, is that right? Well, that's a bit overdoing it, but I'm waiting for the great-grandchildren. <laughs> and you see one of my, two of my grandchildren are Indian, part Indian from Calcutta. One of my children has married a girl who's a Muslim. Uh, my, grand, uh, my grandchildren, one's in love with a black American doctor, another with a black girl from Mauritius, another one's in love with an Iranian journalist. I'm breeding a UN peacekeeping force yeah. for my family. <laughs> and it's so exciting. And in this area, in uh, Notting Hill Gate, I'm part of the ethnic minority. My hair is cut by an Iraqi. I go to Tesco's and there's a girl from Ethiopia. And there's one man in Tesco's I met, a black guy, I said, where are you from? He said, I'm from Kenya. And he said, I suppose you supported the British Empire. I said, no, not at all. I supported Kenyatta. Oh, he said, my father was in Mau Mau. <laughs> so I said, what are you doing now? He said, I'm doing a doctorate in comparative theology. Oh. And I thought the whole story is there. Mm -hmm. And wherever you go, people are the same. That's the point. Regardless of your religion, your colour, or pra we're all human beings. And it's a basic thing, and who better to talk about it than the bishop? But in introducing him, I think morality has got to be the basis for our policy. Otherwise, we shall find there's no society for your great-grandchildren and my great-great-grandchildren. So thank you for coming. And forgive me if I don't stay to the very end. I've done a couple of meetings today, and at 84, I'm beginning to feel it. So thank you very much.